Hey everybody, welcome to Passionate About Music Education and I'm Rachel Hardman and in this episode I'm going to give you a couple of strategies that I believe are game changers going forward for September if you're not already doing these. We as educators create an awful lot of documents whether they are lesson plans, finding resources, finding tracks, recording children's work, um, assessment data, letters that we've sent out to parents about concerts or instrumental lessons. Um, the list goes on, whether it's documents that have come to you from other colleagues. And when I first started teaching, all of that used to come in paper. So you would have piles and piles of paper that you'd need to organise and file. And you had to create systems and strategies for that. Nowadays, we don't get any paper documents or rarely get paper documents. Most of it comes electronically and therefore you need to find a way or strategy to make this work for you so that you can find the documents because there's nothing worse than going, oh, I did a really great lesson on the blues. Where did I save that? And if you're like me and you've been teaching for a long time, you've gone from having paper copies, which you photocopied, which you now have in a storage box, which you've then put onto a computer, but then you've got it on like 17 different USB sticks or a hard drive because that's how it used to be. And now all of a sudden you can put everything on the cloud. And, and that's, been a, that's been a great change. But all that information needs to be stored in a, a way that's helpful. So what I have in uh, on my computer, whether you put this up onto iCloud or whether you have this on your school computer or your personal computer, is I have folders. I'll have the academic year 2020 to 2021, and within that I'll break it up into subfolders. So for instance, because I'm a general music teacher, I might have M1, M2, M3, GCSE, IB. Then I would have a separate folder for instrumental lessons, and for any trips and I would also have a folder for um, any clubs that I'm running or song lyrics or if I have a band program I might put any resources that I've made into that folder and the reason I split them up into the folder is because I'm always going to want to come back to these folders so for instance if I've done a concert and we all end up doing a Christmas concert rather than reinvent the wheel on all of that planning that you did Next year, you can go, ah, right, in my folder from last year, I'll have all the seating plans. I'll have the standard letter that I sent out to parents about performances and, and what time they need to arrive. All you then need to do is take that letter and then tweak it. So you're not having to keep rewriting and reinventing that letter every year. You're just taking that letter and updating it and put it into next year. That really is a game changer. And whether you put that up onto the cloud, which to me seems probably the sensible place to put everything so that you can access it from school and home. But also make sure that you keep your own copy of everything. Because if it's a school cloud and you change schools, then you may well lose all these documents or you might have to copy all of these documents. So you also want to make sure that you have your own personal copy of uh, your documents. And the other thing that I always do is I do the same and have folders in my email box, my school email box. And when I first started teaching uh, 20 or 5 years ago, everybody used to send memos or speak to each other in person, which you know, still was really important to talk to people in person. But everybody sent memos and you would take your piece of paper with your memo and your question, you'd find their pigeonhole, you'd put it in their tray, and you'd be lucky if you got an answer within about 5-6 weeks. But that was normal. Nowadays, everybody expects you to answer an email within four seconds. And it, and it can be quite stressful because our full-time job, and people forget this, our full-time job is to be in the classroom teaching children. We can't sit on the computer all the time. We also have our own workload. We also have our rehearsal schedule. We have our extracurricular clubs. We have uh, lesson planning. We have assessment. We have marking. So... To be honest, answering some of those emails super quickly is not shouldn't be a priority, but we end up getting um, getting on our priority list, and then pushing our own work back, which then impacts our time at school, which impacts our stress level, which narrows down our self care, and and it, it can be quite, a, you know, a downward spiral. So watch out for these things. In my email box, I will have folders, and again, it might be. Say, for instance, I'm, I'm taking children out on a trip. I might name that trip that I'm going on and anything that comes in from a parent 
all that I send out goes into that folder so that I always know that if I'm like I, I need to know whether these parents have responded and given permission then that's in that folder and I have it all in one place because if you're like me and you're running a busy department then you might get 100 emails a day and particularly when you're doing big events or shows or you're, you know, if you're doing a musical and you're selling tickets and sending information out to parents and the cast and the whole school, you can have 100, 150 emails and, and it's, you need them all in one place. So create yourself some subfolders in your email. And again, it will depend on what email system you're using within your school, whether it's, you know, Google or whether it's Microsoft um, Outlook. Um, you'll find a system that works for you. But having it all in one place is really useful because you might, because you've got them in the folder, if you do that trip again or you do that musical again, you can find all that information. So you might again go, oh, I wrote a really good email. What, was, what did I write? And you go back into that specific folder and you can copy and paste that information and then reuse it the following year. Again, you would obviously change the name of the musical or the concert, but the actual core content, the stuff that you write, is really important, and you reuse it. Don't keep reinventing the wheel. It's too time-consuming. If you've done a really great letter, keep that standard letter. Use that information again. So my advice is set up folders that break into sections, your different areas of what you teach each day and make sure you do that for your classes and the every day to day curriculum stuff and also do that in your emails and I promise you that's a game changer it will save you hours of work and if you're like me and you're old school and you've come from paper to floppy disks to USB to hard drives and now to the cloud you find that you've got all these different systems and you have to keep finding a way of updating all your information so that you have it because you may write if you've been like teacher for a long time you may have something that you did in 15 years ago that is amazing but if you're not careful you lose that inf lose that resource and you lose that because it's all just you know hundreds and hundreds of files on a piece of paper so having that information all in one place centralized is a really, really useful tip. Remember, your computer is now your filing cabinet. So instead of having 15 filing cabinets with all these pieces of paper, you have to have your filing cabinet on the computer. So your filing cabinet on your computer has to be organized in a way that works for you. I hope this tip is helpful. I hope you like the channel. If you do, feel free to subscribe and to leave a comment. Feel free to leave a comment about any other topics you'd like me to talk about that will help. Remember, everything I'm talking about is to help you reduce stress, reduce burnout, to continue to enjoy and love teaching music, love music for yourself as well and sharing that with students. And also remember that you need to look after yourself, self-care so that you're happy, so you feel passionate about your job, feel passionate about your life is really important, particularly if you want a very long career in music education. I'm Rachel Hardman, and this is Passionate About Music. I hope you've enjoyed this um, episode, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.